Hello and uh, good morning or good afternoon to uh, all of you guys and uh, thank you for joining us here at uh, Security Day uh, IL. My name is Moshe Ferber and I'm going to talk to you about cloud attack vectors. Um, before we begin, just a quick introduction regarding who I am and why am I um, here. So information security for the last 20 years, um, about a decade ago, I moved from the large enterprises to the small startups. And this is where I came across cloud computing. We began developing our own infrastructure as startups on top of uh, cloud computing. And for the last decade, I've been focusing on creating knowledge around cloud computing. I was part of developing most of the certification in this area, like CSA and IC Square and ISACA certifications. And um, I'm currently involved with the Cloud Security Alliance in different research projects, and this is what I'm going to talk about, it, this uh, research project that we are doing today, uh, currently as we speak, by the way. Um, a, a word about the Cloud Security Alliance, it is a non-profit organization aiming at producing best practices, research, and thought leadership around cloud computing. Everything from the Cloud Security Alliance is available for free, except maybe the certification exam, but most of the um, most of the knowledge they create is available on the website. So go ahead and download it. Um, some examples of what you can find there. So security guidance is like the Bible of the security, uh, of, of cloud security. This is where you go when you want to learn cloud security from scratch. Every two years, the Cloud Security Alliance is publishing their own version of top threats. Um, threats um, to cloud computing, and based uh, and I will refer to this document later on. And um, on the uh, on the free on the right side, basically you see three different research projects that came from the Israeli chapter, which I manage, by the way. Um, one of them is about uh, designing a serverless architecture. Um, very innovative, the world of serverless, we are still considering uh, how to build it. Um, cloud security for startups. Um, if you're a startup, this is the guide you go to to evaluate how you build your security based on the different funding rounds. And lastly, uh, last year we produced the security guidelines for providing and consuming APIs. And today we are working on a new research. It is about risk attack vectors. There are many documents regarding risk and threats of cloud computing. I gave example in the previous slide regarding the top threat working group from the Cloud Security Alliance. There are many others um, organizations that create frameworks for risk and threats. But when you look at their different events, when you analyze the different documents regarding their different risk and threats and their business impact and what could uh, be the result and what was the vulnerability that was used, in the end, it, when you look down and you drill down, in the end, there are very few attack vectors that are being used in those attacks, okay? So there could be many different risk with different business uh, impacts, somebody could be deleting um, uh, storage, somebody can be uh, leaking data, uh, threats to C and I and A, but eventually a lot of those threats, different scenarios, different events ended up with very few attack vectors. So our goal in the current research that we are currently producing, and hopefully by the time you will see this, it will already be released, um, we are working on analyzing those attack vectors, and we decided to focus on infrastructure as a service and platform as a service attack vectors. Stay tuned, maybe in the future we will also issue SaaS attack vectors. But currently, um, the big uh, events, the headlines around uh, IS and PASS are basically, uh, we map them down to about eight different vectors, and this is my uh, conversation today. So, as I said, uh, look at the CSA website. Hopefully, by the time you see this, um, the uh, the document is already out. We might we mapped eight different attack vectors that are very popular. And what I will do in the next ten minutes is review the different attack vectors 
and talk about different events that happened and utilize those vectors. So our number one, um, and by the way, the, um, this is not prioritized, we're just a simple list. Um, exportable workloads. When I say um, exportable, I mean either by C, um, CVE, some kind of a known vulnerability or a zero day that exists on the workload. The term the workload needs to be explained. Workload could be a virtual machine, container, serverless function, anything that is running my code. Okay, and remember, we are talking infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, which means that workloads are my responsibility as the cloud consumer. Okay, so bottom line, um, uh, workloads can be exploited. It could be either by CVE or some kind of a misconfiguration that allows an hacker to get in. This is a popular attack vectors. And of course, you're not supposed to expose vulnerable servers to the internet, okay? Um, patch them, don't do, uh, don't expose them without some kind of a barrier like web application firewall, API gateway, um, a, um, a load balancer even that produce some, uh, can really mitigate some of the, um, some of the vulnerabilities. So uh, in our documents, you will see a, a list of things that you need to do in order to prevent exploitable workloads and make sure you don't end up like um, the companies that you see in the headline. Altesian uh, was hacked by a zero day vulnerability. Um, basically, um, we know vulnerabilities, uh, but the second headline that you see here regarding Hillguard, it was a misconfiguration of Kubernetes cluster. So we know how to patch VMs, we know how to check VM vulnerabilities, Kubernetes, container, serverless, those things are all new to us. So this is where you need to invest your efforts. Most chances are if you screw up around exp exploitable workloads, it would be around some kind of a new workload that we still haven't mastered how to protect them. And Kubernetes is a good example. Workload with excessive permissions. One of the things that this cloud is a bit unique in is the fact that workloads receive a role or permission or access key or interact, uh, interactive account or a service account. Different uh, cloud provider give those uh, different give those uh, instances different names, th those workloads different names. But bottom line, if somebody gets access to um, a workload. Let's take, for instance, a virtual machine. And this virtual machine has a role. It can also exploit the role. Let's focus here on the Capital One incident that happened a couple of years ago. Bottom line, what happened there? Hacker gained access uh, to the, first of all, to the web server by a misconfigured web application firewall that exposed a vulnerability, a CSRF vulnerability, cross-site uh, cross request forgery, to be uh, accurate. So this is relevant to our first vector, the vulnerable uh, workload. But secondly, once you get access to the um, to the uh, vulnerable web server, he man the attacker managed to have the gain access to almost all of the. S3 buckets of the organization. And this has happened because the website virtual machine, the website instance had a role that was too privileged. It had access to the entire S3 uh, storage. Okay, same thing uh, on the attack in, uh, on, on, on us. Uh, the attack vector was log4j. We know uh, log4, uh, sorry, log4, log4shell. The attack vector was log4shell, which is a non vulnerability but once the the, uh, the initial vector was exploited, the VM got uh, had hacker access to it. They managed to um, to exploit the very large role, very um, not segregated and with uh, excessive permissions role that all the web servers had and access the entire storage. So again, pay attention and list privilege 
is still the methodology that we need to adapt. Number three, unsecure keys, credential, and application secrets. One thing that the cloud introduced to us is the usage of API keys, token, uh, access keys, whatever you want to call them. Let's call them all under API secrets. Uh, sorry, under uh, secrets, application secret. Bottom line, every application has tons of secrets. They need secrets to access third parties. They need secrets to access the cloud environments. They need secrets to access their own services. And I think this is today uh, probably the most relevant attack vector there is. People uh, locate access keys inside source code, inside configuration file, inside the virtual machines, operating system and disk. And you need to keep an eye where you store them, okay? The uh, most frightening uh, thing is that um, Circuit CI, for instance, has is storing a lot of access keys for our customers. Sorry, the drapes are going up and down, so there will be a noise for the next two seconds. And that's it. Sorry for that. So uh, Circuit CI is hosting a lot of keys for a lot of users. And when Circuit CI gets hacked, there are a lot of uh, customers with their access keys out there. Exploitable authentication and authorization. So um, we know uh, a lot of uh, vectors of exploiting uh, authentication. For instance, phishing is one example. Phishing still happens a lot, okay? I want to emphasize something to uh, other things. First of all, in order to log into SAS and IS and PASS, we use IDP. IDP are now the major target for hacking attempts, okay? As it, uh, what we learned from SolarWind, SolarWind uh, was used to infiltrate the US uh, Chamber of uh, the Legal, um, I think the min uh, ministry, uh, uh, which uh, ministry was, that? was one of the ministries, I think it was the legal, uh, the legal ministry, but bottom line, once it was infiltrated, the local, uh, LAN, yeah, the local area network, on-premise network, the attacker used the um, IDP in order to gain access to the Office 365. They gain access to the um, ADFS, Active Directory Federation Service, and then they use an attack that is called Golden Samuel in order to do those. So, so protect your IDPs. Second, you see on the right side an example of something I saw. Many people are looking for the Amazon Web Console. So you can see that some good souls, uh, good person, yeah, definitely, have already bought an, uh, uh, an ad in Google that basically the first link that you see looks like AWS Console, but it's a link to a different location. And this is something you don't want to uh, open. Okay, so phishing is not only email, remember, it could be also through Google Ads. Number five, unauthorized to access to object storage. I feel that in the last couple of years, we've been talking a lot about the need to secure um, object storage and how we're going to protect it and the different mechanism for that. So I'm not going to go in details, but still in 2023, we see access to object storage and people uh, unauthorized access to object storage and people are still failing to secure this vector. Number six, third party cross environmental or can access leading to privilege exhalation. So um, we are back to Circus CI and the examples that you give to somebody a third party access to your account. It basically means that you give them some kind of API key, access key, VPC peering, um, some kind of access to your account, and then they could be used in order to access your environment. I want to step aside for one minute and talk a little bit about a same vector, different meaning. There is something that is called financial DDoS or denial of wallet. If somebody can cause one of your services to um, to work overtimes, for instance, access S3 bucket, you get paid. So if you access an S3 bucket millions of times, customer gets a large bill. So this is also attack vectors that could be coming from a third party or from the internet and you need to look out for this um, vector. 
Number seven, unsecured and unencrypted snapshots and backup. Snapshots and backups are extremely popular um, attack vector. Why? Because often people neglect to protect their backups. Um, they store it, they could make it them, them public, you could be storing them under uh, very excessive permissions. Sometimes the backup itself is enough. You get enough PII over there to, uh, to uh, make a good hack. Sometimes you will find an API key or an access key inside the backup or the snapshot, and then it will uh, the attacker will use it to do um, privilege escalation or lateral movement inside your environment. So make sure you protect your snapshots and backups. Um, use encryption, use access controls and roles who can access those backups, put them in a secure location, and build the mechanism around it. And lastly, our last vector is compromised images. Compromised images can be image for virtual machines. Amazon had one, a couple of those actually in their community store. Community store is basically, um, it's unique to Amazon. The other cloud providers don't have it, but the vector can still exist in other providers throughout different mechanisms. Um, so, um, uh, one of the Microsoft images in uh, Amazon store had a Bitcoin miner inside of it. Um, bottom line, we don't trust community image, by the way. The biggest problem is coming not from VMs. We pretty much know how to secure VMs. It's coming from containers. Containers also use images. There's a less tight restriction and security and supervision around those images. And even in Docker Hub official store, you can find malicious containers, Bitcoin miner, backdoors, uh, you name it. All of those could be found. Use always trusted images. So my time is running out. Um, I could, I, I'm gonna keep one or two minutes to, uh, to do Q and A's. If you have any question, do uh, go ahead. I can be accessed through LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, to approach me on this. Um, the document for the cloud security attack vectors should be available uh, if you listen to this in the end of March, probably in the during uh, April or May. It will be re released to the Cloud Security Alliance uh, repository. Uh, look for that over there, or uh, ping me, and I'll send you the link. Uh, hopefully, uh, give me feedback if this document helped you. Um, I haven't mentioned it, but we give uh, for each vector we give providing examples. We're giving um, relevant controls to mitigate this risk. We're mapping the different vectors into Stride and the CSA body of knowledge and CCN and cloud control metrics. So there's a lot of information inside this um, inside this document that you uh, can use for your own protection and stay safe and protect your cloud instances. Um, and thank you, Istra Clouds, for hosting this uh, session. Goodbye.